A long time ago, I spent weeks in the Philippines with a group of people called Negritos. Pretty deep jungle work. The forest around the areas they lived could get really dense. And the smell? Oof. Jungle smelled like swamp ass, smuggled in a dog shit bag. They were awesome people though, very good at the things they did and from a much different world than I had come from. Weird shit and boogeymen were pretty much acknowledged as real. They would tell stories, but these aren't the make shit up to entertain your guests stories. These were more instructional, boring, and without embellishment. They also ate some bizarre stuff and that was part of the reason we were there. Learning to survive in a place that's pretty much an evolutionary arms race and everything else has had a head start on you. Couple of weird things happened while I was out there, not the least of which was a conversation I had with one of our guides as we were rummaging around in the bush. We were setting traps and poking at different plants when I lit a cigarette. My guide made a short hand-waving gesture at me. Both hands, palm down, waved downwards. Put that out, put that out, he said. He had a kind of flat affect to his voice, and these guys are usually pretty quiet out there. Me. Dude, it's hot. It smells like dead whore and I got bugs on me. I'm not putting it out. Eat balls. Smoke keeps the bugs off. Him. Is that tobacco? Me. Yeah, I don't pack anything bigger than that. You want one? Him. Yes, but don't smoke here. Not near the trees. I hand him a cigarette and he tucks it behind his ear. Cigarettes are like currency in a lot of places. Even if you don't smoke and you go traveling in odd locales, carry a pack of smokes with you. You won't be disappointed. Anywho, he won't go any further until I put the damn thing out. So I dash it and give him a bored, pissed off look. Me. Alright, it's out. What's the fucking deal then? We got like feral baboons or something that's gonna jump me for it? Him. I don't know what you are saying, but this isn't a good place for tobacco smoke. Teak belongs love around here. Me. The hell did you just say? Teak belong. He points upwards. He likes cigars. If you smoke around here, they will take you up into the trees and rape you. Me. Wait, what? What the fuck? Rape me up in the tree? Him. Yes, very uncomfortable. I could imagine it as very uncomfortable. The rest of our outing passed pretty uneventfully as I had put out my cigarette and thus avoided rape from something that lived in the trees. Later on, I did some digging around and discovered that tick belongs are these retarded looking horse headed dudes that chew cigars and frequently abduct the shit out of people for little to no reason. While nothing supernatural happened there, it was just a flat matter of fact manner in which he had said such things that struck me as really bizarre. It wasn't a game. They had their games. This wasn't one. It was just instructions on how to not get raped by arboreal jungle ogres that lived in that specific area. One of the more flat out creepy things that happened was when I was called in to assist with a birth in the next village over. Having some medical experience, Corman, woohoo, I lived for this shit, and so hopped on this ridiculous little bike thing made out of 2x4s and scrounged wheels rode down a couple of huge ass hills, and bam, there we are. The village was nothing fancy, same shit you see in documentaries, pretty basic accommodations and nothing more advanced than a simple radio. I don't mean to disparage the people when I say the place was pretty primitive. The people were awesome, just different, and they didn't have any of the shit that we use and take for granted on a daily basis. The kids ate spiders. Oh, did I mention that they ate some crazy shit? No joke. First thing I see when we ride in is this little kid in a blue Superman t-shirt chewing on what I assumed was a cooked or pickled tarantula. Those taste terrible in my opinion. Anyway, there was a young lady who was in labor and showing signs of a difficult incoming birth. So I get together with the village's nurse midwife type and we get to work. Signs are pointing towards a possible breech birth and this girl is fucking tiny. We're in this little hut off to the side, helping her along and I'm making sure she has enough fluids set up an IV and administer what meds I figure will do the most good. The midwife was puttering around, doing things by routine perfection and made me look like a clumsy ass. Hours pass and it starts getting dark. It's just the three of us when the birth really gets going and this little thing is just screaming bloody murder and bleeding all over the goddamn place. The midwife is telling me it's likely the baby won't survive, but the mother is healthy and strong. 
I'm nervous about losing both because there was a lot of blood out where it wasn't doing any good, and the girl's breathing was getting shallow periodically. While we are working, I notice this old bat of a woman come in and stand quietly off to the side. I assume it's the girl's mother or something, and don't say anything about it. Shit finally starts to wrap up, and the midwife manages some sort of judo birth canal arm wrestling maneuver. And we have ourselves a slightly blue-lipped baby girl. After some work, she comes around and starts twitching and being a baby. I hand her to the midwife, who is working on the placenta, and it looks like there's thankfully no tearing or remaining attachments that could cause some serious damage. At least from what we could tell. So, pretty much mission accomplished. A messy and painful birth, like they all are, but not a fatal one. I'm feeling pretty good and give a smile and nod to the old woman who had come in and stood silently off to the side, watching us the whole time. The midwife sees me do this, turns, and notices her finally. She hissed. Women who hiss are scary. It's a weird and hateful noise. Old women are even worse. There's this old vitriol in it that just burns. It's vile and makes you feel so very bad. But old Filipinas hissing? Good god damn. If there's anything I learned from my time over there, it is to never, under any circumstances, be on the receiving end of one of those hisses. It's a poison green declaration of absolute contempt that just makes my damn bones shudder and my balls tighten. So yeah, she hisses at this old goat of a lady who came in, and the old goat just stares at her before hanging her mouth open and making this horrible smacking noise. The old bitch has no teeth, has a face like a wrinkled old anus, and is giving off this miasma of just filthy bad. Tagalog, or the local dialect thereof, comes from the midwife with a volume and rapidity that prevents me from ever translating it. I'm not good with Tagalog, but I got the distinct feeling that everything she was saying to the old woman was profane. The old intruder makes this weird inward moaning sound. There was a movie, The Grudge, with this dead Japanese woman who made this groaning sound. It was like that, but inward and hollower. Not as growly, but with this very weird hungry sound to it. Like a cat yelling, backwards. I'm sort of at a loss for what to do. So I'm standing there, watching this. The mother's fingers are digging into my arm strong enough to leave me bruises, and I have the baby in the crook of my other arm. The kid is still twitching and fussing, but hasn't made any noise yet. The mother, I think, is praying, pretty frantically. The midwife keeps screaming, and this old, toothless, howling woman thing holds her arms out towards me and makes this weird mewling noise before kind of grasping in my direction with her fingers. It was a comically, give me that baby, gesture. Its intent was pretty obvious. Awful kind of her, since I wasn't proficient in the local languages. I was not going to give her that baby. Midwife is still cussing up a storm, and I figure, well, I better make my position known. I shift the baby and sit it beside the mother and flip off the old woman. I know, it's a pretty specific gesture, but I think I got my intent across. This pisses off the old bat and she just lets out this awful slobbery noise. She's got saliva running down her face in thick ropes, and her mouth is this wide, foul black spot on a face that's just looking more and more horrific by the moment. Old folks can be really creepy to look at, and this ain't helping much. Without warning, the midwife grabs the placenta that she'd drawn up from the pan at the foot of the bed, screams some more, and throws it at the woman with great force. What happened next was sudden, far too sudden, and absolutely gross as all hell. Old hag, who'd been focusing her attention on me for the past few moments, just instantly turns, grabs the placenta, and shoves the whole damn thing in her mouth, like a fat kid eating spaghetti. Bam, slurp. I'm not sure if the velocity of the placenta ever altered after it had been thrown. It was a perfect catch and redirect. She moved goddamn fast too. Way too fast for an old broken ass lady. I had hardly registered what just happened when the hag left. It was like she had bungee cords attached to her back under high tension, and she flipped a catch somewhere. Whoosh, backwards out the door. She went out with such speed that the mat on the inside floor went flying. I wriggle loose from the mother and run out after her, intent on, I don't know, something. Perhaps more rude gestures, but there's nothing out there. 
just jungle. The bitch was gone. After that, things went calm pretty quickly. The midwife continued her work with the mother, and the baby started squalling finally. I pass out in a chair in the corner and wake up the next morning to find the mom sound asleep and the midwife still going about her business, which happens to be her shooing me off. Many days later, I told that story to one of the Negritos, the same one who had warned me about the equine-aspected brutes of molestative intent in hopes of some sort of answer. I described it as best I could, and he said I had seen a monongolin. It's a hard, weird word to say, monongolin, but you say it really fast. At first I thought he meant penongolin, which I've heard about, but he told me it was different, or at least different here. Now that I think of it, he was pretty liberal with his bees, so he may very well have said Menongala or Benongalan. Long story short, the horrible woman was some sort of undead baby-sucking vampire thing that could be assuaged with either fresh placenta or dissuaded entirely with fire and thorny branches. I'm imagining masked firepower could probably dissuade her as well.